All right guys, it's a nice sunny day here on the rooftop and I thought I'd do a quick update for Saturday. Um, my last, UK, last day of my UK job was yesterday, so I've decided to take a breath of fresh air and actually spend the weekend doing weekend stuff. Um, one of the things my wife said to me, she's, she actually said you should take a week off somewhere and just go somewhere, even if it's on your own. Um, not that she wanted rid of me, it's just the fact she was saying that you've never had a holiday and when you look back the last time I probably had a holiday was in the 90s because I've always been doing something it's a bit weird but it's true you know because even when I went out to the Philippines you know I'd be working in the UK or the Middle East or whatever then I go back to the UK and we'd be doing construction projects when I got back and then there'd always be you know working seven days a week so yeah it's a bit bit of a strange one because I'm not used to downtime so it's very hard for me just to sit still and that's one of the things my wife says you should just chill out for a change stop stop thinking and trying to push things forward um, so I'm gonna try this weekend we're gonna go down to the beach half past two I've been told by my son uh, he wants to go swimming for those that are asking is it warm or cold well your answer will be this afternoon when we actually go swimming um, Is it easy to move to a new country? There's, there's a couple of things I want to put into this because there's two, two things that happen. Um, the first one is, I'll get, there's a friend of mine, well, he's still a friend of mine, I just don't know where he is at the moment because he went off to the US somewhere. Um, but it, he originally come out of what is now Zimbabwe uh, when it was British Rhodesia. His father was a, a farmer. Um, but his father sold up, left him there, and then he ended up in South Africa in some hippie commune for 10 years, and then he went off to the Philippines. In the Philippines, there is no sort of safety net. You don't go down to the unemployment office, because as a foreigner, you're not entitled to nothing anyway. The Filipinos have enough problems. So, while he was in the Philippines, you know, and this is pretty much most of the expats I know, they find ways to make an income. In his case, it was with cigars. He sold cigars to South, South uh, Koreans. Um, he got them made, you know, got the tobacco, got them rolled, and took them to South Korea and sold them. Um, would that have been his normal job or whatever? Of course not. But the point being is we bumped into each other, and this is how I met him, in the UK, because he was um, in a housing association house. and. I, as a surveyor, I had to go around and have a look at the problems he was complaining about on the property. And when I went there, I seen there was a couple of problems, but the thing is, we hit it off straight away, and as soon as I recognise, I can't remember if it was the smell of the fish, because there's certain things you'll recognise if somebody's Filipino or not. But anyway, I asked his, his wife's Filipino, and he said, yeah, and, and then the thing is, we just hit it off, and he says, oh, you'll have to stay for dinner now. I was there at 12, I was still there at 5. Um, but the, the, the point being is, we hit it off, and that's when we got into talking about how the UK actually is a bit different. Because in the Philippines, you've got no money or whatever, you, you, you generate the money, you have to find a way to make it work. In the UK, one of his ideas was relating to LED lighting for churches and other um, private enterprises. And I say private because they're easier to approach than trying to approach, um, I don't know, Matalan, for example. Um, so the point is, we were discussing it, and he said, well, the thing is, he did ask a few people, and he thought about putting an ad in the paper and stuff, but he says, the thing is, in the UK, there's this big thing about shop your neighbour sort of thing, and he was a bit worried, because, quite simply, he, he didn't want... He couldn't take the leap forward to get the business started with risking um, losing the benefit side of their stable income. Because in the UK, because of the way it's set up, it actually paid them more for him not to actually work and just his wife work part-time at the sports centre. Um, that's how stupid things are in the UK. So the point being is, it actually hindered him actually developing his own business, where in the Philippines, because they don't give you nothing, you find a way. And this is why I was probably the same here in Spain, because obviously the Philippines and Spain are very close. Um, 
they don't really hinder your development. This is probably why there's a lot of black market uh, industries that go on in Spain, because quite simply, um, you probably have to get big enough for them to be bothered with you, unless you're actually bothering somebody else, and then it becomes a different thing. Um, but a lot of the time, they don't seem that concerned. I know they started clamping down on the um, property stuff, but I'm not even sure that's around tax or other stuff that's been going on relating to um, illegally renting properties. But anyway, the, the point being is, when you come to these environments, you'll get people say it's easy for you, it's this, it's this. I've got to learn a new language. I've got to get companies that are predominantly Spanish to accept me to come and work with them. Um, I may have to move into working at a supermarket or something, or even McDonald's even. Um, and I'm not knocking McDonald's because there's opportunities to, to actually progress within the McDonald's business chain. Um, rather than being a senior engineering manager um, who normally manages millions upon millions of pounds worth of contracts. Um, but do I see that as a hindrance or do I see this as a problem? I see it quite simply that I'm in a new country, I've got to adapt to the country and it's not their fault I don't speak Spanish, that's my fault. But then again, was I coming to Spain 20 years ago? The answer is no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, and my school, uh, schooling was French and German. We never learned Spanish. And so uh, the point being is it is one of those things you have to accept coming here. And this is why a lot of people will either survive or fail in this short period. Because it's whether you accept the fact that um, you're not going to get the job you want, you're not going to get your normal type of work, etc. Or are you going to accept that you just got to suck it up and just get on with it? Because that's the reality, you, you've got to find a way forward. Um, and for me, I don't have a problem with finding a way forward. It's just finding the right one. Now, I'm going to give people a little bit of help and hint because you've listened to me for long enough now um, if you're looking for bar work restaurant work that sort of stuff I recommend going face to face even if you see it on Facebook if it's near you go and nip in there the reason being is uh, just imagine you're the bar and you've advertised on a Facebook group that you need a I don't know part-time um, waitress or waiter so you've got some applications come in, you've got four or five come in, and then some, somebody walks in the door and asks you straight, tells you, you know, look, you know, hits off with them straight away. Are you going to look at the other applications or are you likely to take the person who's walked in and you can already see they seem ideal for the job? I know which one I'll do and I'm, I'm, I know it sounds unprofessional, but let's be realistic here if you ask anybody that deals with recruitment or um, HR they should actually tell you the decisions are normally made within the first few seconds of somebody walking through the door um, so the point being is it isn't any different to having 10 sheets of paper and uh, making the same decision as soon as you hit it off when that person comes through the door compared to somebody who just walked through the door um, so with that sort of stuff I reckon door to door. Just go in, ask and say, look, I've done this before, I'm willing to learn, I don't mind pot washing, I don't mind what I have to do to make this work. Um, to get yourself in the, through the front door. The other one <coughs> um, is like the agencies. There's Indeed, um, I've come across Indeed, Adeco, um, and then there's websites like Infojobs. Um, then there's like the big companies that have their own recruitment. So like if you go to Mercadona website, they're currently recruiting I think 3,000 people for the summer. Um, and then obviously you, you sort of look every single day. But get your resume set up for different types of jobs. Mine's engineering bias, and I know it puts people off, so I'm having to simplify a second uh, resume um, without all my engineering and stuff on there to sort of make it easier for them to go, yes, you can wash plates or whatever. Because um, the biggest thing, 
that happens is people see my resume and don't want to employ me because they're not expecting me to stay because they can already see I'm overqualified for what they're after. At the same time, I'm trying to get a maintenance job at Mercadona because I can pot around doing that all day long and I don't mind doing that full time permanently because um, I actually like doing maintenance stuff. Um, doesn't pay great, but I don't mind. It's not about that. It's the fact is I need to learn Spanish and that type of work I can do standing on my head. I did it for Matalan, did it for Sainsbury's. Um, been in facilities for over 20 years. So the, the point being is you've got to be a bit flexible. You've got to get your resume in a way that is A, it's in Spanish, but in the Spanish resume format. And B, always do a cover letter. And one of the things I try to do now uh, is be less formal. Because if it's a big corporation, I try to be a bit more formal, simply because in the cover letter, they're trying to drag out exactly how you'll fit into their business and depend on their HR or whatever, it can be a bit robotic. Um, but if it's a smaller firm, what you're trying to do is show that you're a human being at the same time competent and can deliver what they're looking for. So you've got to weigh those things up and obviously it's got to be in Spanish. Although it hasn't stopped me applying for a couple of jobs in English um, because my CVs, because these are engineering jobs, um, I've still got to get them translated and cut down for the Spanish market on the engineering side. But at the same time, at the same time, it hasn't stopped me putting the application in with a cover letter in Spanish, apologizing that my Spanish level isn't at a level I was comfortable at um, converting my CV for them. So that'll have to just wait until it's um, ready. And I did put that, I'm working on the CV at the moment do apologize but I didn't want to miss the deadline because that's the other thing a lot of them do have deadlines you'll try and apply a week later and they've closed it even though the job isn't uh, due for another three weeks so that's one of the other things it, it, you know it's, it's getting that balance it's like I'm applying anyway um, but it, you know it's better than no application but at the same time like I said I did put in there I'll send them a Spanish one as soon as it's ready but anyway that's enough for today Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.